I'm really looking forward to the opportunity to share ideas among the Torontonian community because that's actually where we get a lot of inspiration for our tools. So what I wanted to tell you guys about today is our lab's efforts in trying to create end user tools that go beyond traditional genome browsing. And it comes from our collaboration with researchers who are trying to identify the causes of genetic disease. So we're all probably aware of the fact that high throughput sequencing technologies have revolutionized the way that we gather sequencing data. And we can establish long lists of genetic variants from our sequenced individual, but the challenge still remains to go through that data and find the one or two or few genetic mutations that are causing this disease uh, in our patients. So through talking with people who actually do this kind of research, some have somewhat pessimistically described this problem as trying to find a needle in a needle stack. That's because through the collection of variants that we identify, most of them are not causal. Either they're not relevant to the disease of study or they actually don't have a function. But the ones that we do find that look causal in interesting genes end up being false positives, and that's because there are errors in the sequencing pipelines or in the computational pipelines that are used to predict the variants. So I don't disagree that this is a super hard challenge, but I think that there's a lot of inefficiencies that exist as a byproduct of the tools that we're trying to use to solve the problem. So the first and probably most popular uh, approach is to employ a set of command line tools, which are, of course, extremely powerful, but they take a long time to set up. And for people like geneticists and physicians who might want to do this analysis, they're extremely difficult to use. So the alternative is to use, heaven forbid, something like Microsoft Excel, where it's extremely easy to use, but they're not powerful. So we have this trade-off between power and usability as a function of our tools, not so much has anything to do with the problem that we're trying to solve. And then there's this third class of tools called the genome browsers. And despite there being over 40 or 50 different genome browsers, most rely on this linearized coordinate system. And I would say that in the context of our problem in trying to identify causal genetic variants, using this linearized system is a little bit like trying to browse the web without a search engine, in the sense that you can tell it where to go but you can't tell it what you're actually looking for. So that's sort of the motivation behind this platform that we're trying to develop, which we call MedSavant. And it's sort of a sister spin-off of the Savant genome browser that we've been developing as well. So what we wanted MedSavant to be was a variant search engine that's as powerful as the command line for the task that we're designing it for, but as easy to use as something like Microsoft Excel. So what we did is we interviewed people who are doing research in the area, and we identified four functional cornerstones that we really wanted to make sure that we got right within the system. So the first one is the storage of variants. So how are we going to store millions and millions of variants as they're generated almost by day now? So we had to design a specific system that leverages the commonality within genetic variant data sets. And what we did is we managed to get about a compression ratio of 10 to 15 times. So we can store terabytes of information in gigabytes. And that really helps us to be more efficient uh, with respect to storage and querying. The second major functionality is in variant annotation. So for every variant that we import into our database, we want to annotate it with whether or not it exists in a gene and what gene it, it, it lies in, whether or not it's predicted to be harmful, et cetera, et cetera. And then to use those annotations as a function for uh, constructing complex queries on that data so we can really hone in on the, those variants that we think are the most relevant. And then last but not least is a visualization component which provides real-time feedback on your progress throughout the system. So I wanted to give you a brief demo of MedSavant. We're a little bit short on time, so it's going to be sort of a, a, a crash course. And this actually comes from an installation that we have as part of a collaboration with the Center for Applied Genomics uh, for their autism sequencing project. So in this particular instance, we have information from over 200 individuals, and we have 21.9 million variants loaded into this database. And one thing that we, we wanted to make sure is that you can get back to something that looks a lot and feels a lot like Excel. But we've also complemented this with a graphical user interface for constructing queries on the data. Uh, and this might look a lot like Amazon or eBay when you're searching for your favorite car. You have all these different categories, which are, again, annotated for each and every one of your variants, which you can easily specify in your queries. So here we have real-time feedback saying that that particular query, which we just applied, eliminated more than 50% of the variants. So uh, now we're down to 10.3 million variants. 
And this real-time feedback is something that we really tried to hammer home. And it's a major distinction between doing uh, analyses within this platform versus something like the command line, where you don't get real-time feedback. I think that really increases the efficiency of the workflow. So here we see a distribution of the quality values of the variants within our data set. Uh, and the ones that are grayed out are those that we just eliminated through that query. So we're now going to switch to the harmfulness predictions as per polyphen. And this is a pi distribution of those categories. So the P here stands for probably damaging, and the D stands for damaging. And in this example, we're just going to focus on those, uh, at least on the first pass. So again, we go over to our search conditions and really easily specify this query. And we're left with 456,000 variants left. So 2.1% of our variants are, are remaining. And we're going to try to get that down to 10. So what we're going to do now is switch over to our enrichment section, which allows you to incorporate a gene list. So we've established a list of 250 genes which have previously been associated with autism. Uh, and this is our list. And what this component does is it uh, computes frequencies uh, of the variants that exist within those genes. So all of these uh, numbers here say there's 79 variants in this particular gene. Uh, and the one that we're looking at here, we have 10 variants in the Fox T1 gene in 10 different individuals. So we're going to filter by this particular gene. This gene is known to be involved in brain development, so it's, of course, related to the autism spectral disorders. So here we're narrowed down to those 10 variants that are of high quality, are predicted to be damaging by polyphen, and exist in a brain development gene. And when we click on any row within the spreadsheet, we get more information pertaining to the, the variant. So here, this is all the information that the genotyper would have used uh, to actually make the call. We can also click this little button here, and we're going to inspect not the variant, but the gene. So here we have uh, all the ontological terms that are associated with the FOXP1 gene, uh, as well as our collaboration with the Gene Mania team to construct gene recommendations based on interactions with this particular gene. So flipping back to the variant inspector, what we want to do is manually uh, validate this call through a genome browser. So here we're going to click a button which will load the read alignments and take us to this position in the genome uh, at which the, the particular variant was called. So here we have all the reads that uh, exist at that particular location, and this is the suspect called. And what you can do is you can take a look at the base qualities. Um, so you can see there's a little bit of transparency scattered across the calls where those are low quality bases. But the ones in the middle are actually pretty opaque. So that's a good sign. Another good indication that uh, a call is real is support from both strands. So this actually separates um, the distribution of, of the, two, the two strands. And we can see that there's good support from both. So it was on the basis of this kind of analysis that we recommended that this particular variant be resequenced through Sanger sequencing. And it did actually check out that this was a real variant. So we can add a comment uh, to that effect. And that's actually shared with everyone who's doing the analysis on this data set. So I just wanted to summarize that MedSavant is a platform that we've been developing for high perform performance uh, storage and querying of genetic variation. And it's integrated with a fully featured genome browser. And hopefully, it makes the process of identifying causal genetic variants, that, that issue of finding needles and needle stacks, a little bit easier and more efficient. So with that, I want to acknowledge the rest of the people who uh, were involved in doing a lot of the hard work, the development team, uh, and of course, TCAG and the Forge Consortium for providing us with data. And definitely, our sources of funding would not be able to develop this platform without you guys. So thank you very much. Sorry, can you say that again? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So the way that we do that is we incorporate um, virtually any annotation that you can specify as like a GFF file or a BED file. We can annotate our variants with that. And then you would get that in the list on the search panel, where you can say, I want this to be in a promoter region uh, or not, for example. 
Yes, coordinate system is great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's it's available if you ask us. We're sort of trial on a trial basis yeah. doing installs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good to hear. <laughs> it's so it is open source, and uh, the database platform we use is something called Infobright. It's a column-based uh, platform which has both commercial and open licenses. So currently, this exists on a single machine, uh, and we can store pretty easily 30 to 50 million variants with with really good speed. And I'm really um, I'm really particular about having this be dynamic. We could go up to hundreds of millions of variants, and you'd have to wait like 50 seconds, but it's pretty good. Like within 30 to 50 million, it's virtually instantaneous. Sorry. So. The commercial version of the, the database platform does, and that's the distinction between them. 